What's up guys, I'm super fired up for this video today. We got a new video from Gripped Media. Today this one is called Varadkar called Gripped Disingenuous, our response. So this is basically in relation to the last video. It blew up on Gripped Media's channel. I did a reaction to it as well, go back and check it out. It was amazing guys. So when it came turn to uh, have different medium and news platforms ask questions such as BBC, Gripped Media, eventually at the end, when Grip Media got a chance to ask their question, what Leo Radka did and Michal Martin and the three, the three Stooges, what they did is they ran away from the questions, guys, okay? Pretty much make a long story short. And then Leo Radka came on a podcast, kind of bad-mouthing Grip Media and their sort of, you know, platform, which is it's a very unfair, guys. You know, me personally, looking at it from a distance. I got a full video today for you guys. We have Ben talking exactly what happened in that video. So his response to it as well. I love this back and forth, guys. <laughs> you know, we can already tell who's winning this one. And obviously, Grip Media is the biggest news platform in Ireland. So drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys all think. If you want to see more videos, new videos on Patreon every single day, you can support me over there. This one should be incredible, guys. Grip Media, obviously the only alternative news platform in Ireland. So people should be supporting it, guys. You know, you got to support free speech, free expression, and alternative news media platforms. You guys can support me as well. County Gaines News Network. Let's get it, guys. By now, millions of people have seen a viral video of myself attempting to ask Taoiseach Leo Varadkar a question as he flatly ignores me and walks out of the room while I'm in the middle of speaking to him. Taoiseach, Minister Ryan, uh, you, you set up the Electoral Commission specifically to fight misinformation and that commission has repeatedly confirmed that the Constitution... I had intended to ask the Taoiseach about an incident just the day before regarding his own minister, Catherine Martin, because as many of you will know by now, Martin has repeatedly made verified false claims about the upcoming referendum and the Irish Constitution, even doubling down on these false claims after she was fact-checked by her own government's anti-misinformation body. Ju just That's bad, guys. That is bad. This is Murray Baker, the Supreme Court judge, who is the chair of the Electoral Commission, said in an interview in the Irish Mail on Sunday that you were incorrect about this. She, she said that you're, you're simply wrong in your interpretation of the Constitution. This is a body that your government set up to fight misinformation around electoral events like this. As I said, for many women, the import is that that provision is quite clear. So to be clear, the government set up an agency specifically to fight misinformation. That agency started fact checking cabinet ministers about their referendum claims. And so I wanted to get the Taoiseach's response to this. The irony in all that guys, the irony in all that, that they set up a platform to stop misinformation and they're the ones actually spreading misinformation could you believe it <laughs> situation which i think you'll agree is a pretty reasonable thing for a journalist to do but unfortunately before i could even finish the question the t-shock took off like the car from back to the future <laughs> all while to he did his best usain bolt impression he ran away from the question and that's the thing guys i said in the last video i wish bren would break it down uh, ben would break down this video and he did guys you know much love much shout out to him big shout out to him because I didn't really know what was happening, so hopefully we get the full story here. So yeah, before I think midway through when he was asking the question, he just said, I'm not answering these questions. You know, I'm leaving, basically. Because it wasn't a gotcha moment, but it was basically more of like a, you know, you know, showing what the actual truth is, guys. And a lot of times, people can't handle the truth, you know, like that movie says. Totally ignoring me as if I wasn't even speaking. He didn't even look in my direction. And then when asked about this on Highland Radio by presenter Greg Hughes, the Taoiseach reacted by lashing out and attacking Gripped and me personally by extension, since I'm the guy who asks the questions. He started by claiming that the press conference was already over and that I wasn't called on to ask a question and therefore there was simply no time to answer it. Are you or your, your, your government colleagues being selective uh, as to who the answer questions from? Yeah, that's that's not what happened. The press conference was over. I had to go and prepare for leaders' questions and it all. And it's never the case that everyone who turns up at the press conference or any meeting gets to ask their question. Uh, in that case, the person uh, wasn't called uh, to uh, put their question, but shouted it out anyway. There, there's a press office. Well, people shout out questions all the time, guys. That's what happens. It's not like a flip and you put your hand up. Like I don't even understand that. It should just be who's the first person to ask the question. That should be the way it is. It shouldn't be like... Please, sir, will you answer my question? It's like, no, dude, like you're responsible for explaining to the people what's going on in the world, or especially Ireland, okay?
officer who chairs the meeting or chairs, chairs the press conference that lasts for a certain period of time and ends a certain period of time and everyone doesn't get get, get their question in. Mm. We just wouldn't have three hours to do that. Now, there are several fatal flaws in this response, of course, one of which being that I was not the only journalist to shout out a question. Kira Phelan of The Examiner, who was sitting just beside me, also shouted out her question without being called on shortly before me, which she was perfectly entitled to do, by the way, and more power to her. I have no problem with that. But the only difference between Kira and myself in this case is that her question was actually answered, while mine was ignored. In respect of the occupied territories and the legality of sin. How quickly will Ireland introduce sanctions against Israeli settlers? And can you give your view on um, Hungary blocking the EU wide sanctions? And just Taoiseach as well, have you had a response um, from Ursula von der Leyen to your joint letter with the Spanish PM? as well, please. <laughs> but we can kind of all assume that the reason they don't answer the, these kind of questions that Ben is showing is because they don't like those kind of questions, guys. You know, it's just, that's the whole point of this video. I just want to drive that home. It's not, is he, was he allowed to do it and ask questions? Was he, you know, in the right you know, headspace or whatever to not answer the question. Was he, was the thing over? Was the whole press conference over? No, no, no. He just didn't like the question, guys. That's plain and simple, man. You know, putting it to you straight. Looking to grow your That's a long answered question. <laughs> just by the way, that, Jesus. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I think we're working on that, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So shouting out questions is in fact a normal part of these events, yeah. as any experienced member of the press pool knows, and it happens all the time at these things. It's a standard procedure. The other issue with the Taoiseach's argument is that numerous journalists got follow-ups and additional questions despite the supposed time constraints. And meanwhile, so far as I can tell, two of the only people who didn't get a question were myself and Barry White of News Talk, who is known to often ask prickly immigration questions. Questions. If 70, 80, 90 asylum seekers move into a hotel or building in their community, can you guarantee that there will be no increase in crime? Because that's often what we hear, especially in social media. Both Barry and my So when Barry White is not singing, you know, and making some great music, he is asking the government some prickly questions. I think, like he said, he works for News Talk, so I don't really watch News Talk that much. Like, they're not, I mean, even, you know, questions aside, they don't even... Honestly, I, I think they're completely impartial towards the government, guys, honestly. Like, News Talker, they, they ask prickly questions, true, but I think it's all just like a, I think it's a setup, honestly. Myself had our hands up the entire time and we were flatly ignored. And in fact, the press officer coordinating the day would not even look in my direction, or otherwise acknowledge my existence. I spent the entire press conference with my hand up, trying to catch his eye, as journalists who are around me will attest to. Damn. And on two separate occasions, I even had a member of the government information service go over to the guy and nudge him to point me out, and he still refused to look over. So you'd have to ask why, if time is so limited, do certain journalists get more multiple questions and follow-ups, while others are brazenly ignored until the very end when the clock has run out. It's the kind of thing that would make you wonder, wouldn't it? But re so, what he's basically trying to say is RT, BBC, what other news, probably like, you know, RT news, probably some news, a lot of other news platforms got to ask questions, but Grip didn't, guys. Really, for the Taoiseach's part, I think what people most objected to was the lack of acknowledgement. Because, of course, the Taoiseach is a very busy man, being the leader of the country. There are an unlimited amount of people who would like a piece of his time, which he can't always afford to give. He has lots of spinning plates and various commitments, and I fully appreciate that. And so, if he had simply said, sorry, I have to run, but I'll catch you another time, or done a wave of acknowledgement, as Minister Eamon Ryan graciously did on his way out, I don't think that people would have had any kind of issue with that i certainly wouldn't have but yeah, but he didn't guys and that's why the video blew up 40 48 50 000 views this one's already got 45 000 views so crazy crazy numbers like because people know like people are watching these videos like what the heck is going on and i should have made a response to this video as well guys but i got terribly sick the last like four days like the worst ever and i never get sick so yeah maybe the government implanted me with something <laughs> they saw my last video they saw my channel blowing up too big you know what i mean 
it's tough guys to all the haters man i'm still here we're gonna be making these videos every single day and yeah hopefully man hopefully we get the biggest channel in ireland and they have one of the biggest channels in the in the country as well guys they definitely have one of the biggest channels in the country so it's amazing to see they're keeping on growing i love it this is where the Taoiseach's comments get particularly shocking and egregious because he went on to then accuse Gript and me by extension of being disingenuous in our questions and trying to drag extraneous issues into the referendum debate while baselessly questioning our funding sources. But that particular news outlet, uh, I'm afraid, it, when I do answer their questions pretty regularly, um, is quite disingenuous on these kind of issues. Um, and also uh, was very much trying to drag extraneous issues into the referendum. So they're not acting in good faith. Uh, there's a political agenda there, and they're pretty upfront about that. Now, this well, he has a political agenda, so that doesn't make any sense. Everybody has a political agenda. So that's just, again, a non-answer. Bro, when you actually start to break down what a lot of these government officials say and the fact that they're saying uh um uh, i can't listen to them for more than five minutes guys a lot of people say oh this guy has a american accent well stay tuned haters we're gonna be the biggest channel in the whole country so we're gonna see what you guys say then but apart from that guys apart from my you know hilarious <laughs> multicultural accent at least i don't stutter and uh, uh, you know just say the most ridiculous stuff ever when i'm speaking I can't listen to more than five seconds of that guy speak. Ben, extremely well-spoken guy, never does anything stuttering or anything crazy like that. So I could listen to Ben all day. I couldn't listen to Flippin Radker, any of these people for more than five seconds, guys. It's unbelievable. I mean, my head is just wrecked. I get a headache listening to them because I can't. It's just so bad articulated. It's just terribly articulated, their speech. I don't understand why. Like, do they not get classes in oration? It's ridiculous, but... Yeah, it's just really, this is unbelievable. This is nothing short of outrageous, and it's hard to even know where to begin with this. For starters, he accuses myself and Gript of being disingenuous in our questions. So let's actually take a look at the facts for a moment. What is disingenuous about my question to Minister Martin, or indeed the Taoiseach? Your own misinformation body has fact-checked a cabinet minister from your government, and then if I ask about it, I'm somehow disingenuous for dragging extraneous issues into the discussion? It is in fact your minister who's dragging red herrings into the discussion by claiming that the constitution says something that it simply doesn't say. But notice, Catherine Martin isn't disingenuous for doubling down on false statements, I am for asking about it. You see how this works? Before that, I asked the Taoiseach about a child in Ireland who became permanently paralyzed while waiting for spinal surgery because earlier that week it had been raised in the Shannon by Senator Tom Clonan. Again, is that disingenuous to mention? Did I make that story about the paralyzed child up? Is Senator Tom Clonan disingenuous too? Or am I simply asking you about a real situation that happened to someone in this country? Once again, before that, I asked the Taoiseach about his own country on the Dublin immigration rules where he made a claim in 2019 and then turned around a few years later and called his own position an example of far-right misinformation. <laughs> Yet again, Taoiseach, am I disingenuous for bringing that up? Did you not say those things? Or are journalists simply not allowed to notice when the leader of the country contradicts himself on a major policy issue? Apparently, yeah, That was the best gotcha moment of the whole of last year, guys. Go back and check out my reaction to that one. That was amazing. My crime here is having the gall and temerity to notice when you do a U-turn. Then the Taoiseach reached for the bizarre non sequitur of claiming that GRIPS funding sources are unknown. Um, we don't know how it's funded. Um, it's not about... Well, you know, I'm not a flippin' investigative journalist or a flippin' detective. You know, I'm not in the FBI, but I'm a social media guy and I can, you know, I'm a YouTuber guy and I make my money from YouTube and the support that I get from the loyal patrons and my loyal subscribers and my loyal followers, you know, and I just look for views. I don't even care too much if people don't subscribe to my Patreon, but to be honest, I get enough money from the views, but I'll tell you this guys, it's not too hard to find out where people make their money from. They make money from YouTube. They have a channel that you can donate to as well. Go over and donate to the Gripped Media as well while I'm here guys, you know, it's not really that hard to understand where they get their funding from, guys. Come on, come on. Informing um, their subscribers if they even have any. Now, of course, he doesn't need to. If they even have any, they have thirty. They have thirty-one thousand subscribers nearly on YouTube. So they absolutely do have a lot of subscribers. Nearly a third, actually more than a third, less, maybe a third, nearly as much as RT. RT only have a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube. 
their YouTube channel specifically. So, you know, they're, they're only one third of them, but they'll get there eventually. You know, everyone's going to get beaten out eventually, guys. Like, we're, our channels are growing a lot faster than RT, so. Ask who funds other media outlets because he already knows who funds them. Namely, he does. Apparently, Gripped, being one of the only outlets that doesn't receive funding from the government, makes us somehow suspect in his view. But, of course, <laughs> we do know... People can't believe that you can do person-to-person -person deals in this country. You know, I make money for my personal training as well. I have a personal training clients. I have a bunch of uh, personal training clients. So that's why I make a lot of my money as well. Where Gripped gets its funding from, we get it from people like you, the viewer. Ordinary Irish citizens chipping in 10 or 20 or 50 euros a month, depending on what they can afford, because they value the work that we do and they want to hear these questions asked. That is who we represent, that's who pays our wages, and more importantly, that's who we are ultimately answerable to. And I'm sure there will be many of those people who are watching this video now who will be only too happy to tell the Taoiseach who funds us. So if he doesn't believe that we have any subscribers, Subscribers, I'm sure there are more than a few people who'll be happy to fact check that for him uh, Absolutely, and I just did it for you brother and not for nothing guys But I'm reacting to pretty much every single video that they put out every single big video that I find that I have knowledge on I react to You know and I haven't even talked to Ben <laughs> just for nothing guys, you know just in terms of working out I did so there's not some sort of back room shady deals like he's paying me to react to this stuff No guys, that's not it at all. So people think how can they have love and how can they have funding? Because I support what they do over there. I support this alternative news platform. That's how people make money in the world, guys. Mutual beneficiary, you understand? So, yeah, people, the t-shirt can't understand how people are supporting other news platforms apart from RT. Well, now you know, brother, this is how we're supporting it, guys. You know what I mean? Because we support other opposing views than that. You don't always have to go along with the, with the straight views that everybody else has, guys, in life. So, effectively, to recap here, the Taoiseach found his own government in hot water over electoral misinformation, and then when asked about it, his response is to take evasive maneuvers and say, how are you funded? As if that's a satisfactory response. Like, what, what do they think? They're funded by some sort of, like, I know what they're, I know what they're trying to get at, guys. They're trying to say they're funded by some sort of, like, crazy, militant, far-right group somewhere in the world. Like, no, dude, that's not what's happening, dude. It's just regular people, everyday people in Ireland. Look at their comments. There's no bots, you know what I mean? It's all just regular people. To what is clearly a very serious constitutional matter. Does that really seem good enough to you? At the end of the day, Gript represents a certain section of society who are tax-paying citizens of this country just like everyone else and who are entitled to see their preferred news stories covered. Mm. That group might be big, it might be small, but either way, it's real, and they deserve to have their concerns heard and highlighted. And so myself and John McGurk and all the other Gript team members are merely hood ornaments on the front of a much bigger machine. So when politicians dismiss Gript, they're also dismissing all the readers and viewers behind Gript who wanted to know the answer to those questions too. So baselessly impugning the integrity of journalists who ask inconvenient questions that the public are interested in probably isn't going to work out the way you would like it to. Yeah, I love it guys. And you guys can see by the response, 45,000 views. The last video got 50,000 views. So I absolutely love it guys. Make sure to drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys all think. These videos I'm going to be reacting to every single day, so loads more to come from me. I react to a bunch of different you know, news media, gripped media as well, articles, and loads of different videos on the internet, on YouTube. So yeah, let me know what you all think. Drop a comment down below. Stay free. I love you, Ireland. I'll see you guys on the next one, man. Peace.